Okay, let me re start recording it. Hold on. Okay. Hello, welcome to our call. Team Live Full took call tonight. Um, Saretta and Angie are going to share what they learned from the retreat and stuff um, a, a weekend ago, a weekend and a half, week and a half ago now. Um, so, um, and yeah, go ahead. Take a head. Go ahead. Okay, so first off, I spent like pretty much the whole time just in awe <laughs> because I remember seeing people do stuff like that for years. Um, really when network marketing kind of started growing, I, I had friends that did things like that and I was like, well, that would never be me. And I had like a lot of, I guess, pride in that. Like I can never leave my family. I'm just like, this is who I am and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But gosh, it was like so amazing to be in the room. Like, like I said about summit, the idea of being in a room with people that are so successful and are willing to tell you how they do it, mm -hmm. that's just golden. Like that's something that money can't buy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we paid a little fee to go down there, but like it was so minimal. Like I could not go to the beach for one day for what it costs us to get to go to that retreat. So much was covered for us. And I just felt so blessed by that. But I remember sitting in the room thinking, oh my gosh, the vice president of coach relations is talking to us and will answer our questions. Like that's the guy, <laughs> you know, like how in the world am I in this room? And so, um, I also was just like shocked when Summer said that she had like finagled a way to have professional pictures of us done not just as a team, but individually as well and as smaller little clusters. And that was like really, really cool. And I think it's important to know that these things are available to us. Like there are trips with Beachbody and there are retreats and there are little team gatherings and things like that. And they're so special. You can't, you just can't imagine what it's like to be surrounded by people that have the same vision as you. Because one of the things that I know is like, I always feel like I'm an island almost that no one thinks like I do. Like I'm constantly surrounded by people that don't necessarily agree with how I do things. And I'm challenged by like, why do you eat that way? Like nobody challenges you if you shove your face full of hot dogs or whatever, but you try and like avoid <laughs> one thing. It's like, why are you like that? And so being in a room full of 30 people that weren't going to question my choices, <laughs> like even if they didn't make those choices, they just want to see me the healthiest I can be. That was really cool. But before, before I turn it over to Angie and let her share hers, I did want to share just really quickly a couple of things that we learned in a training. Um, if you watched any of Summit, Rob and Chelsea Pearson were like the couple that got awarded with I want to say it was a leadership award and you would think man they must be like super hands-on and all this stuff and using all their time to help people but they are not like that at all and they talked to us about how to set our businesses up so that we're not running ourselves ragged to help other people be successful first off we just do the stuff obviously. Um, they gave the example, if you brush your teeth, like let's say you forgot to brush your teeth last night. You don't wake up and go, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth. I just can't do it this morning either. Like <laughs> you go and you brush your teeth. Like that's just what you do. And the business has to be something like that. Um, and one of the main things that they said is like one click mentorship they have basically a podcast or something from someone else that does not have their face on it that they can share for anyone that comes up with a struggle. Like they don't try and fix it themselves. They don't get into long conversations without the other person taking some ownership. And I think that's really huge for me because I get so frustrated with people. I'm like, I, I just don't know how to help people when they won't do anything. And so this takes that frustration away because you can say 
hey, this podcast really helped. So I have one that I actually share with people on being overwhelmed. Jen shared it in Fit Club and I saved it. And so when someone tells me they're overwhelmed, I'm like, hey, this video really helped me. Will you watch it and tell me what you think? Then if they don't watch it, it's, it's just done. If they do watch it, then we can have a shorter conversation where I don't have to tell them everything I learned in the video. They learn it themselves. And when they take ownership, they're more successful. And so that was really big. And they also say stay in phase one all the time. No matter how big your team grows, you always stay in phase one um, and get those things done first, then help your team grow um, as they're doing something. So like if I haven't done my invites and stuff, I don't need to be spending time helping one of my coaches make a sale and not do my power hour. I can help them and then finish my power hour, but I need to make sure that I'm going to get that part done. I can't just do one instead of the other. And then the last thing I wanted to share was that you think about it as a garden hose. You're basically always looking for the big, the next biggest hole. You're not trying to fix everything all at once. You're just looking for where you're, maybe you have a leak that you can fix. So like in our IPA post, when you look at that, not to compare how many you did to how many Jen did or how many I did to how many Angie did or anything like that. But the areas, like if you connected and you found people, but you had zero invites, that's a hole in the garden hose. And that's where we put our energy. We fix that hole and then another hole will pop up and then we fix that hole. And it's just a constant tweaking. I love how you are giving them a bath, Renee. <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> um, but those were some of the main takeaways that I do. I just had to share and wanted y'all to hear. Um, there was, there was so much, so much stuff and I'll probably go in team LaFool on occasion and just share some things, but I wanted to say those things out loud because I think sometimes it helps to just hear it. Awesome. Thank you. That is really good. And actually, I was hoping you would say about the garden hose because I have seen you. Oh, I think I'm frozen. You guys there? I hope you're there. Oh, no. You still there? Okay. It was frozen on my end for a second. Um, I heard you say that a few times. Like, it sounds like a hole in the garden hose. And I'm like, I need them to hear what that analogy is because I don't know what that means. Um, so I'm glad you explained that. And that is, that is so true. And um, that's what, I mean, Darren Hardy says that everybody says that with like tracking you know, that's why you track your food. Like, wow, I didn't eat any fruit today. You know, you can find that hole or you can, you know, when you track where you spent your time, wow, I, you know, you can see where it is. So um, I like that analogy, you know, with like our IPA things, you can look and say, wow, I don't have any coach invites. Maybe that's why I haven't added any coaches, <laughs> you know, because if we haven't invited to coaching, you know, we, like, you know, you don't, if you haven't, you can't add five coaches this month if you didn't invite any <laughs> right <laughs> so so yeah so angie i will let you go and um you can share and Freda, i know you're on the way to your doctor i love can i just say like what you just said like renee is giving triplet 18 month olds <laughs> a bath before bed Soretta's on her way to the doctor angie's at work like it's my evening i've been at soccer and um came home fixed dinner and they're doing homework like i just love that we can for, for one, that you guys made the, made the time to be here. I love that. And just that we can fit this in, you know, we're all busy. We're all doing different things. And, um, I just love that your guys are here and, and that we can do this together. All right. And you're up. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I actually texted her this morning and asked her what she was going to share because I didn't want to kind of like double down on what she was going to share, but the things that, um, that I have been thinking about to share were completely different than her. So that's good. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm kind of like Soretta whenever we, well, I'll back up a little bit. I'm the kind of person from different life experiences that I go into something without expectations. Um, growing up, um, just over different life events, I would be um, promised something and then it wouldn't happen. So it kind of like tainted me a little bit in knowing what to expect and not what to expect. Does that make sense? So 
we were we drove all the way down i mean we had an amazing trip soretta said we're already here it's like four hours and i mean we just talked so much and we connect so well that i mean it was like we just got in the car and we were there so i love my soretta and we had some amazing conversations um so anyway whenever we got down there i it took me until we actually got on the street like we pulled on the street to kind of like get excited i mean i was excited to to win the trip and i mean but i, I didn't want to like over expect something and be disappointed i just didn't know what to expect so anyway when we got on the street i told Sarah, i was like ah, we're finally here we're finally here and i just like drove slowly i'm like we're just gonna take in like this whole experience of, of driving down the street and, and i'm getting to this thing i said because wow we're here i mean i, I just it kind of like sunk in that I actually was there in that moment. I mean, Soretta the whole time was like, we're going to Florida. I mean, she was so excited, but I just was kind of like reserved a little bit. And I shared that with her and why I was reserved. So she understood. So anyway, when we finally pulled up to the house, I mean, just all these emotions just kind of like were flowing all over me. And I was like, I cannot believe I'm here. I mean, this is just amazing. And then once we walked inside and, summer and chad were there and we started meeting the different people in there and we they told us where our room was and i had just everything so well organized and set up and it was fun and we learned so much while we were there i'm just like what in the world do i actually share with you guys the biggest takeaway that that i can probably share well the two different things one is what we covered um a couple weeks ago about negative mindset and we had an amazing, um, I guess you call it a session or a class or whatever you want to call it while we were there. And it was in the evening time whenever it was getting dark. Um, they asked us to pull a piece of paper out and they wanted us to write down all the negative things that we say to ourselves. I think they gave us like maybe five minutes to do it. And had I known what they were going to do afterwards, I would have written down like two things. <laughs> I probably had like 20 things on my list. So after, um, after we all wrote those things down, they, they lined us up um, along a wall in this gorgeous pool that area that we were at. And they asked us one by one to read out loud to the next person beside us what we had on our list. And it said like, sort of like we did um, a couple weeks ago, you are not a good mom, you're not a good coach, you're unorganized. I mean, we just went through this whole list oh my goodness y'all they should have like told us we needed some tissues because there was not a dry eye in the house i tend to be a little bit more reserved um until i really get to know people but there was no way you could be reserved in that in that that time and it probably took us like 30 to 45 minutes y'all to just everyone to read their stuff and i mean there was not a dry eye in the house and i'm gonna try not to get emotional but my very last one on my list, I'm just going to share that one with you guys, was I've always been a second choice. I didn't even realize I was holding on to that. And I've been holding on to it forever and ever and ever, but I really had no words to put it in. And I didn't, I never had written that on paper. I mean, it was like rolling around in my head for so long, just I won't even go into details because I just don't want to be it to be a boo hoo fest. <laughs> but it was freeing to me to finally like, just like get it out. And so many people came to me afterwards and were just, you know, you're not a second choice. I mean, you know that you are God's first choice always and that you're an amazing person. And I mean, they just lifted me up so much. And after, after we did all of that exercise, they had a fire lit on a grill and they said now take your paper that you wrote all of these negative things about yourself and go and put them on this fire let them burn away and don't think about this again and then after you do this we want you to sit back down and whatever was negative you're going to flip into the positive i have felt such a relief y'all since that i really really have and whenever i start to get that negative thought creeping into my head i immediately I'm like no satan get away from me because you are an enemy you are the father of lies and you're trying to bring me down and that is not what god wants for me so that was like probably like the most most memorable 
um, session that we had. I mean, I loved each and every one of them. I mean, I love listening to the Pearsons and their amazing story. I mean, I love um, listening to Doug come on um, Zoom and just feed into us. And, and we had time to just talk with him and ask him questions, which was amazing. My, um, my second takeaway was about vision. And some are shared um, that you have to know what you want. You have to know where you're going and why you're going there. And you have to understand that there are limiting beliefs in your thoughts, like, I don't deserve that, or I could never be a diamond coach, or I don't have time for that. I mean, you can just fill in the blank because everyone's got a different story. I mean, I'm super busy. I have, I wear many, many hats. I mean, mom and wife, and I work outside the home. Many of you don't know, I lead um, a women's pastor prayer partners group on Sundays. I volunteer downstairs in our kids' world area at church. I am the president over our Cub Scouts. I mean, I've got a lot of hats that, I'm, that I have, but Beachbody is like one of the things I'm going to hold on to. If I had to get rid of a bunch of the other things in my life, just so I could stay here with you guys, stay in this community of people that are amazing and who love each other, who encourage each other, I would probably get rid of the Cub Scout stuff, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not going to get rid of my Jesus stuff. <laughs> I need that. I need that. Um, but we just all need to understand why are we here? I mean, we need to understand. I mean, I know they use your whys, your whys all the time, but you really need, need to figure out what your why is. Why do you want to be here? Why do you want to be a coach? Why do you want to help other people feeling a, feel as amazing as you do? My biggest why is my family. I mean, I want to be healthy. I want to be a good role model for my family. I want to be a good, healthy role model for other people. I mean, I, I would have never touched the lives of 25 to 30 women at this point had I not joined Beachbody. I mean, it's, it's scary getting out there on social media, y'all. I mean, I'm, I'm, I look like I'm like, hey, but when I post stuff, I'm like, holy cow. I mean, how are people going to react to this? And like Summer shared, you have to get thick skin after a while and not let negative comments bring you down because there's going to be haters, y'all. I mean, there just is. In every arena of our lives, there's going to be haters. But we've got to understand that if we have an internal desire to be in this community, and we know that this is where we're supposed to be, we gotta push all that negative stuff to the side. And we've just got to sometimes just learn to ignore it and not even comment on y'all because if we feed into the negativity, they're just gonna feed back into the negativity. So, I mean, I've had negative comments to me before and I'm just kinda like, whoa, I'm not even gonna feed back into that. Maybe later on behind the scenes off of Facebook if I, am able to reach out to that person in, in, in Messenger, I'll just, I'll reach out to them. And a lot of times I can turn the conversation around, but I'm not going to go out there on social media and feed into the negativity. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep inviting. I'm going to keep doing a scary post. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I mean, if it takes me three years from now to get to Diamond, which I'm not going to let that happen. That's eliminating the belief right there then I'm just going to be around here. You're going to see my smiling little happy face. Um, and, you know, just my two takeaways, get rid of your negative thoughts, write them down, burn them, shred them, whatever you've got to do. Start speaking positive words of affirmation into your life. I love um, the idea of writing them down on, on note cards, post them in your vehicle, post them on your mirror that you look in every day, post them on your refrigerator. I mean, post them everywhere that your eyes are going to look at every day. Because once you start getting that positive in there, you're going to feel better about yourself and it's going to start leaking out into your family. It's going to start leaking out into your business and to everyone all around you. And then my second takeaway is, remember, it's all about mindset. We can do things so much bigger than we feel like we're, we can do because we just got to believe in ourselves. I mean, you're going to get 100 no's, guys, before you get a yes. I mean, that, that's just part of the business. But why not 
at least try to get those 100 no's so that you know in your heart that you've done everything you could to push that ball forward. And then, I mean, get, get around some good people. I mean, listen to some positive PD. Make sure you're checking in the Fit Club every day. Um, join other positive motivation groups. I mean, do whatever you can to leave goodness in yourself. Read some good, healthy books. Join the Rise Up Crew if you're a coach. I mean, Summer puts a lot of great stuff out there, just like Jen and Soretta and I put out there. We're not going to be the person we want to be if we don't find the other individuals that we want to be like. Whoever you want to be like, let them be part of your circle. Let them mentor you. Let them feed into you. No. And if next year for the Diamond Retreat, I want all of our coaches to be there so they can have that amazing opportunity that Soretta and I had because we missed you guys. We really missed you guys. We missed being there. I know Renee and I both would have loved to be there for sure. Thank you, Angie. Angie, girl, you are an amazing teacher. I know, I mean, I know this already, but you, like, you need to keep talking, <laughs> keep talking, <laughs> you know, go live so people can hear you and share because you, um, yeah, you're very motivational and I, I know you don't always feel calm doing it, but you sound very calm and yeah. You'll be up on that stage one day, girl. I told you that, remember? <laughs> um, I know Soretta had to go to her, her thing. So um, you have, I'm going to meet you, Angie, just since you've got stuff in the background. Unless, do you have anything more to say? I'm good. Okay. I'm, um, yeah, just because you have for people recording later. And Renee, you're like a rock star. <laughs> you just <laughs> Angie, her husband has been gone for, what, 10 days now? More than that? Um, something like that, and she's taking care of those 18 month old triplets and her six year old, and going to Bible study and leading Awana and 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 like just everything. You're a rock star. Um, and I might add, adding a coach and a challenge pack tonight, right? <laughs> so she'll be emerald on Thursday, which we can't wait to celebrate. Um, so yeah, homegirl is amazing. All you guys are. Um, so yeah, I won't keep this too long because I know we're all crazy. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Um, I was just listening to the Josh um, thing. He has this like five day free recruiting group that I know Angie and Thread are in. Um, but this week long group is free and it was really, really good mindset stuff. But I just wanted to add this on when you were talking about the affirmations. So he says, and I taught this too, like a couple weeks ago, you know, change it to, I am organized. I am blah, blah, blah. I am a good coach, you know, like change your things. And he said, that's all well and good, but if you just wake up, and he is really funny, he does like valley girl impressions. <laughs> and so he was like, he was like, I'm a great coach. Like, I can't even do what he did because it was just really funny. And he's like, I'm a unicorn. I'm a great princess. And like, you know, all these silly things. And he's like, but <clears throat> he said, nothing changes if you don't do something different, you know, and if you don't actually change your actions, you know? And so he was like, you can say that all you want and it's great to say positive things, but he said, you need to change it and make it be because. Um, and so this was one I wrote down. He says, uh, because I'm willing to share what I have done to get where I am, I'm easily helping anyone who is willing to do what I've done for as long as I've done. So instead of saying, I'm a good leader, like that, like, okay, <laughs> you know, like what's the definition of that? What does that mean? What does that look like? How can you check at the end of the day, did I do the things that, that are like, that I'm a good leader or, you know, or whatever. But he said, if your statement about being a good leader is, I'm willing to share what I've done to get where I am. I am, am easily helping anyone who's willing to do what I've done. And so I can say at the end of the day, did I share what I did today? Did I share my invites? Did I share that I did my PD and that I scare, you know, did a three scary coach invites? Like, I'm sharing what I'm doing. Anyone who comes in can do what I've done and you will get where I am. And I'm, Summer shares where she is. I can do what she's doing and get to where she is. Like we all, like, um, that's what being a good leader is, is like sharing what you're doing. And he said another thing too is a limiting mindset of, I can't help anyone because I'm not successful yet. And I'm just saying this for you and for anyone else that's listening. And he's like, what is that? What does it mean to be successful when you started, you know, are like we're never happy with where we are because he's like people who make six figures they want to make seven figures <laughs> and then the people that make seven figures want to make multiple seven figures like no one is ever there they never are happy with where they're at and he's like you know think when you started 
you wanted like $50, right? Like, didn't that sound pretty good? <laughs> you know, like you're pretty happy with $50. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll take 100. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll take 500. You know, like it goes and you're never at that level. But if you can teach someone how to make $50, you can teach them how to be successful, right? You can teach, if you can teach someone how to, you know, start eating better and lose five pounds, they can be successful. It doesn't have to be at um, the level that you think it is. So like if you can, if you've gotten to where you've got and you can share that with someone, then you are a leader. And like, anyway, it was just really good. I thought he was really, and then he said, if they're not, if you're willing, yeah, if you're willing to do what I've done, um, then you can have, you know, what I have <laughs> and all of us can do that. And I thought that was a good reminder because I think, I know just talking to different people, you know, you're like, well, I'm not successful yet. Like, yes, you are. Some other people would love to be where, right where you are. Angie, I know a lot of your coaches that I was hoping would get on here tonight, they want to go on that retreat. And they were like, what's Angie doing? <laughs> like, how'd she go there? Can I do that too? And that's how we build that belief. But you can totally help all of them do it. You know, and it takes the, the pressure of like leadership off. And he, like, like he just wrote a book that's called F Leadership, <laughs> which I'm not sure I love that name. But he's like saying... <laughs> Um, you know, he's saying like, why do we put on this big old pedestal of like what being a good leader is? And he's like, you're just sharing what you did to get where you are. And then someone else can share what they did. Like, that's what being a leader is like us sharing. And then that person shares what they did. And that person shares, I mean, my coach shared what she did, which is what her person shared. You know, that's all we have to do. And it, he's like, just sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? And I was like, yes. Like, why are we so afraid of, cause I know I was for a long time. I'm like, I'll get all the challengers, but I don't want to invite someone to coaching. Cause like, I don't know how to help them be a good coach. And what if I don't, what if I don't say the right thing? And what if, you know, like blah, blah, blah. Like for one, everything they need to know is here and available. Like we have checklists, we have this, we have podcasts, like we have all of the materials and the training and if they're willing to do it, they will be successful. And so it like takes the pressure off. And then he says, that's why we don't invite because you have this limiting mindset that you can't do it. But when you just take that off and realize, oh, all I have to do is just share with them what I'm doing. It, then you're like, heck yeah, I'll go invite other people to do this because I want them to have what I have too. And um, on yesterday's call, I'll just share this and then I'll let us go. It's 7.30. He said, um, if your life has changed in any way, then it is your moral and ethical obligation to share it with someone else. And that's a Grant Cardone um, quote. And he said, um, you know, like it is selfish to be sharing it, to not sharing it, you know? And anyway, I don't know. I'm just like ready to invite. So I like got and did these voice messages. I invited like three really super fitness people <laughs> that are like really like CrossFit Spartan race crazy people. And I just was like, I'm really scared to invite you. Um, and I said, but I just can't get it out of my heart. And I just feel like God is saying, I just need to reach out and you might think I'm crazy, but have you ever thought of this? And, and like, that's how I said it. Like, it's totally crazy, but I'm just like, I don't care. Like, it, I, how can I not tell them? And you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe they do need money. Maybe they are struggling with their nutrition and it seems like everything is perfect. Or maybe they're really struggling with their marriage. Like we don't know how, um, like how we can help someone until we ask. And we have, our job is to ask. And if they say no or they don't, like what Angie said, who cares? But like our job is to ask. And I'm like, let's go ask everybody. <laughs> Come on, let's go ask everybody. <laughs> I'm just really excited. I've I kept, like, I went during soccer, and I was, like, it was raining, so I was, like, I'm really not going to go and just watch soccer practice in the rain, and so I sat in the car, and I just, like, sent more invites, like, on voice messages, because I was, like, everybody needs this. Like, it's selfish for me not to share it. Like, it really, really is. When it's changed my life in every single way, like, aside from health, you know, mental, this, positive, marriage, finance, like, everything, like, how can I not share it with other people? So, yeah, go share it with somebody. <laughs> I'm just like fired up today. I guess I needed to get back into Josh stuff <laughs> to inspire me or whatever. So, all right. So we'll, um, I'll make it. I want you guys to invite someone to coaching. Okay. And post it in the team page. I didn't take a video when Soretta was on there. Maybe she took one. Um, I'll take one just in case she probably did. She was good at that. So I'll smile. Let's see. Um, but invite someone to coaching, like tonight. Who do you want on this team? Who do you want at the beach with you? 
like I, there's people I know that they could probably benefit from this, but I'll be 100% honest. I don't want to deal with their drama. I don't want to be at the beach with them. I, I'm 100% truthful. <laughs> like I don't, at, at, the, at their current stage, maybe they could change, but I'm like, I don't want to be near them. So the cool thing is we get to choose our partners. Like what job do you get to, Angie, do you get to pick who's in the other cubicle next to you? Like, no, <laughs> you know, and we get to choose who I, I, my dream, I'm saying it, I've said it before. We're having a retreat. That's a team live full retreat, 50 people, a hundred people. Like that's, I would love that. I want to have a marriage retreat and our husbands come. Everybody gets their own room. <laughs> no sharing rooms. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, like, who do you want to be there? Who do you want to be sitting around and having a drink with, you know, at the pool? Like, go invite them because, like, let's build this tribe, okay? I'm just excited. Ready? Break. <laughs> okay, so you invite somebody and put it in the, put it in Team Liverpool page, okay? And just, like, do it now. Um, do it before you think about it. Just send them 30-second messages, and if who cares? Like, like Angie was saying, like thick skin, like who cares? I had this girl tell me that how dare I say that Lunchables aren't healthy. Like she wrote me this really, really long mean private message. And I just said, okay. You know, I said, thanks for letting me know how you feel. Um, you know, and I just was like, I'm not going to fight with you. <laughs> like, I'm like, bye. You know, like, like, don't worry about what they say. If they're like, no, I think that's stupid. But I've never really had anybody say, I think that's stupid. They could say, it's not for me. I'm too busy. I couldn't be good at it. And it's all on them, like their limiting beliefs. But no one usually, very rarely in five years, very many people are like, why did you tell me you're dumb? Blah, blah, blah. They don't do that. We think in our head, they're going to say that. They don't do that. They might be like, I don't understand or, you know, stuff like that. But they don't say, I can't believe you ever would, you know, especially if you're like, I'm afraid to say this. <laughs> like they are so kind to write back. And, you know, so um, like, let's just get over that fear of needing to be perfect and that blah, blah, blah. Like we have something amazing. Let's go share it with the world. Okay. All right. Okay. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye.